Kiwi, what are you doing up there? Don't worry about it, Mom. But don't worry, I'm wrecking these scrubs. What did you just call me? <laughs> uh, don't worry about it, Mom. I'm, I'm playing a game. Oh, yeah, and what exactly are you doing in this game, huh? It's a game where you shoot people and people die, okay? Will you stop bothering me? You're making ruining my KD ratio. What? I mean, uh, it's a game where you play as little blueberries and you make pizzas for a funny troll. Isn't that family friendly? Oh, really? You're playing a game like that? Yeah, yeah, totally. It's, it's called, uh, um, uh, Zumbinis. Uh, that's a real name. Then I guess you want to mind reviewing this game downstairs then, huh? Absolutely, I'm already down the stairs right now. Hey everybody, it's QuickCat Gamer, and today we are going to be reviewing a absolutely game that I is definitely real and I didn't just randomly think of called Zumbinis. Now, what a shame. I I, I just don't have the game. Uh, I guess review's over. Uh, Alright, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time. That's it. But oh. Wait, the game exists? Zumbinis. Just, just start with that name, Zumbinis. A, a game called Zumbinis exists. Really? And you play as blueberries. And you give pizza to a troll. You realize I made that up, right? I, I, I actually made that up to get my mom off my back. It exists, Zumbinis. It's actually called Zumbinis. What is wrong with people these days? Okay, I guess the review's continuing. Um, where do I start with this? I think I'll start with I actually have played this game before. This is this is my first one. Obviously, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have done a review if I hadn't played the game at least a couple times before. But I will also say, when you think of educational games, where does your mind usually go? Yep, that's pretty much what I thought. Things like Oregon Trail, Mavis Beacon, Yukon Trail, Bailey's Book House. Oh, oh, what's that? You don't remember that one? Well, I remember that one. And I'll never forget. But it's very rare that I run into someone who remembers Zumbinis. And I can't really blame them. I mean, heck, the only reason I got introduced was it because my mom came home one day and was like, I have this giant box of CDs. Go nuts. And I found Zumbinis in there. And when I found that this game is on Steam, well, let's just say it was a chance I couldn't possibly miss. So, without further ado, let's get into this review, shall we? The objective of the game is quite simple. Get all 500 of your Zumbinis from the Zumbini Island all the way to Zumbiniville. What do those things mean? Well, I'll tell you later, but to get to there, you have to complete puzzles. And the puzzles range from being simple but fun to really annoying and for no reason and very time-wasting. You lead your Zumbinis through every single puzzle until you get to the end, and then you just keep doing that. Now I'm sure you're wondering, Kiwi, that sounds really tedious and boring, and besides, the puzzles are just gonna stay the same. Well, here's the catch. Every time you get a successful group of 16 Zumbinis through a puzzle, the puzzle gets harder every time until it gets to like a super intense mode that I didn't get to because I didn't really put enough time into it. But I feel like that's a really great thing for a kid's game because this is a kid's game after all, and you know, it, it challenges kids every time. It says, oh, you did it really well this time. Well, let's make it a little bit harder, challenging your logic skills or challenging your uh, probability skills better and more effectively every time. I suppose that's not talking about the objective. Time to go into what I like about the game. Where do I begin with this? Oh, I know, the voices. The voice acting in this game is hilarious. I love it. It's the most hilarious thing about this game. Possibly the best thing about this game in general. Now, of course, the Zumbinis don't talk. That'd be kind of weird if little blueberries started saying things like, Hello, Peter, but they do make a weird little noise. What I'm talking about is the narrator and the, and the pizza troll and the bayou boatman. The pizza troll in particular. I think he's the most memorable thing from this entire game. And that's not to say that this game isn't memorable. It's just, well... Just hear some of his lines for yourself. 
And so our brave travelers continue on through this dusty wasteland until they meet Arno, the almost omnivorous, one very hungry pizza troll. Fleens? You're not Fleens! Huh. Whatever you are, make me a pizza! Come on! More stuff! Yeah, yuck! Oh, my pizza! You see what I'm talking about? I mean, like, the, all the characters in this just make playing this game so much more appealing. Like, the fact that he's just a stump asking a blueberry for pizza, come on! It's hilarious, like, an actual kid wrote this. Every single thing that you're doing a puzzle for that can talk has so much character and livelihood that it's like they have their own life going on. These Zumbinis just walked in and interrupted them on it. It's so funny, like, even the rocks, there's rocks that talk to you, and they're so sassy and funny when they don't, when they don't want you to go into their side. Or they're happy too when you get something right? Ah, sure. Or if you're just Arnold the Pizza Troll? Have a pizza! Have a pizza! pizza, pizza. And on the topic of vocals, I really also like the music of this game. Heck, every artistic thing about this game, the music and the art and the characters, all of it, it's just, it's just so great. It's like they actually put effort into what they were doing and it's just, it really shows and it's really amazing. You know, just, you look at the landscape and you're like, man, this is just amazing. It's so vibrant, all the colors are so vibrant when it's supposed to be, or if it's supposed to be a gloomy or, or dark or even sleepy place, the colors are all dark, but it still feels homey and it still feels like, it still feels like you can go on this adventure. It feels like it's not impossible. It feels like these Zumbinis are going through this ma mystical, magical land of a, of a place that they've never been to just to get to the promised land. Heck, there's ambience, there's animals walking around, there's a giant crab at the beginning that you see, there's animals walking around, there's ambience, there's clicky things, there's things you can click on at the campsite, there's a saxophone solo and I haven't even said the best part yet look there's a waterfall those things are expensive you can't just throw those around willy-nilly name one bad game that has a waterfall okay that one doesn't count okay Getting off that topic, even though it's probably my favorite part of the entire game, talk about the puzzles, because that's the main part of the game. And for the most part, the puzzles are really well made for children. Like the pizza troll one, ah, gotta stop myself from spamming that, uh, the, the pizza troll one, it's very good for kids, it's easy to pick up, it's easy to understand, it gives you a lot of leeway to make mistakes, and that goes for a lot of the puzzles, and that's great, it lets kids make, make mistakes, and it lets them understand what's wrong, and um, understand how to get it right. I like that the game doesn't take itself too seriously, it realizes that it's a kid game, and it accepts it. I really like it, and they put a lot of work into it. I love, love this part of the game. Now, there are, of course, things that this game does that I don't like, and that's why I have the dislike section. Puzzle right here. I hate this puzzle. It's the most long, tedious, and boring thing. In other words, it's a pretty penultimate puzzle full. Pretty, pretty pitiful penultimate puzzle if you ask me. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. Just kidding, no I'm not. This puzzle you just stare at it and it's like, oh yeah, which one is it? And you have to look at them and it's not even, there's nothing, there's no interaction other than you move, drag, drag, lever, drag, drag, lever, level, level. You press the level five times and then it crashes so you get to do it five more times again. I love this, said no person ever. This is the worst ever puzzle, I hate it, it's the worst. And it's one of the last ones that you have to do it. It's not one of those that you can skip. You have to do every, you have to do it every single time that you have to do it and you have to get everybody perfect. And if you don't get it right, then you have to go all the way back and do it again and I hate this puzzle so so much <sighs> okay all right I'm fine I'm fine uh, just kidding no I'm not 
not even any way fast way to do this puzzle. It's like, oh yeah, guess what, dude? You got to have to do it a billion times. You have to stare at the screen until you find the one that matches. Click, drag him over, and then you get the other one. And don't even get me started on what happens when you do the other ones. When it gets harder, then you have to match things that don't actually match, and you have to look at the things that may change the things. You have to change the thing. So you're not even looking for a certain zumbini. You're looking for a zumbini that has eyes that are the same as the one over there, or one that has the same nose as the one over there, and you'll never get to do it fast. You have to look at the same thing over and over and over again, and it's the worst puzzle ever. I hate it. Whew. You know, I mean, I, that puzzle's not the worst one ever. It could be worse. It could be this puzzle right over here. This puzzle is just a personal attack on my eyes. I said earlier how I'm colorblind and I can't see different colors. Well, look at this one. Look at all the colors mixed around together. Can you pass this? Why don't you take this test online? Where are we? I can't wait to fail this test miserably. Let's take this test right now. <clears throat> so why exactly do you think that I have the ability to do this puzzle? Hmm? Why do you think that I should be able to do this puzzle since I'm colorblind? <laughs> okay, but seriously, I actually do have a complaint, like a real complaint. But those puzzles are bad, but I have a real complaint. The hints are extremely vague. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not asking for the game to be like, Oh, you don't know how to do it? Well here, let me just show you exactly how to do it, like some other games that I know. But, I am asking that when I ask for a hint on how to do something, at least tell me the pattern that I need to follow. For example, this hotel one, I didn't know how to do it. I honestly didn't. I actually had to go look up on the internet, and I'm ashamed of that, but I had to go look up on the internet how to beat that one. And when I clicked the hints, you know what the hints told me? Just, just try. Just, just try, and then if you fail, just... Just learn from your mistake, but I can't learn from my mistake if I didn't learn anything new. You just, if you keep throwing your, your, your tries at a problem and never do anything different, then you don't know what happened, and if you get it right, you don't know what you did right. So you're just like, what did I do? What did I do? I understand that what they're trying to do is make it so the kids figure it out on their own. But if a kid can't figure it out, then give them a hint. At least tell them, oh yeah, they have to be the right type or they have to be a certain nose type in each door, or it has to be a certain. If, but he'll throw the Arnold will throw pizzas in whatever place and order them in whatever kind of pizza he didn't like or what he did like. I will also say that when you lose Zumbinis, while it doesn't really set you back that far, it's really annoying to have to purposely lose Zumbinis at the very beginning and then have them move on because when you get to a campsite that's a checkpoint but you can't leave unless you have all 16 Zumbinis so if you're missing one Zumbini at the very end then you have to take a you either have to take a Zumbini from your campsite at the begin at the first campsite and then lose all the other Zumbinis or take one Zumbini from the very very beginning of the game take them all the way to the end and then hope that you don't lose that Zumbini. In other words, it's more things that I personally have wrong with the game than things that are wrong with the game itself. At least, that's the way I view it. And now, it's time to talk about the story, and I think I'll let the narrator take the lead on this one. Not too long ago, Zumbinis enjoyed the good life. Though they all looked slightly different, different eyes, noses, hair, feet, such differences meant nothing to the Zumbinis. So this obviously isn't America. Alright, got it. Got it. Not a symbolism for America. And so they lived happily on Zumbini Isle, making small useful products which were prized the world over. The Zumbinis had a sense of fulfillment and inner peace. Not to mention healthy bank accounts. Yeah, so again, definitely not Then America. one day, who should show up but the bloats? 
those filthy blokes. The blokes offered to help the Zumbinis grow their businesses. I gotta say, and that train so all on point. And improve their quality of life. Being trusting so I wanna know what they actually said. The if they actually said, agreed. oh yeah, you guys are gonna dance around like this, and then they did. But before long, the bloats had taken over everything. Sad. Stealing profits. Canceling holidays. Oh no. Piling on work. What are the they gonna do for Zumbini Christmas? Getting oh my gosh. Stress out. All, not to mention, well, get rolled over by barrels them only and get so squished. Far before they take matters into their own hands, uh, so to speak. <laughs> so they decided to escape and build a new home in a distant land. Nice. Now how the rest of the game plays out is kind of up to how you play the game. So here's how my Zumbini story went. The rest of the Zumbinis were kind of afraid to go, you know, they didn't, they didn't know how to go. So what they did is, despite all being, um, all boasting that they uh, celebrate diversity, they sent um, an entire team of 16 uh, almost identical looking Urkels, uh, deemed the Urkel Squad, into the Great Unknown. As the Urkel Squad climbed up the mountain, they got to the bridge where the thing sneezes if they look too different, but good thing that all the Urkel squad looks the same, and so they all went on and went on to the next room. They pretty much went all the way until they ran into Arnold, the pizza troll. Sneelf, Arnold! Sneelf! Heh <laughs> you thought I was gonna use the, you thought I was gonna use the have a pizza party one. Well, don't worry, because I'm gonna use it right now! Unfortunately, on their travels with Arnold the Pizza Troll. Have a pizza party. They lost a member of their Urkel Squad. Luckily, a replacement was sent promptly, because Urkel Squad for life. Anyway, the Urkels decided to go south into the dark forest, when first they encountered the Fleens, or should I say the Sneelf. But because all of the Urkels look the same, the Fleens look the same also because they didn't know that there was a, a, tw a twin day going on in the dark forest. So the Fleens or the Sneelf got chased away by an evil pair of scissors or something like that. And then the Sneelf ran away because of the evil shark made of bees. And then, so then the, then the uh, Urkels went on to do the hotel. And then I figured out how to do the hotel, so I did it correctly. Then they went on, and then they reached their second campsite. As they approached the ancient lion from Aladdin, uh, they passed it with relative ease, and then there was this stupid thing that I'm gonna skip because the game crashed three times while I was trying to do it. And then, and then it was the bubble game. Oh gosh, the bubble game. Not the bubble game. Just kidding, it was the easiest of peasies. Then, finally, they emerged from the dark cave where they saw. Again, I'm gonna let the narrator take this. <laughs> And then the Urkels lived happily ever after. And then, you know, eventually all the rest of the Zumbinis made their way to the place, but don't worry about that. Yeah, just, 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 just don't worry about that, honestly. It's, it's not important, but yeah, all the Zumbinis come later, and that's fine. So there it was, my review on Zumbinis. And what do I give it? Well, pfft. Honestly, a 9.5 at the very least. Uh, for what it needs to accomplish, that is, being a kid game, it goes above and beyond what it has to do. Of course, there are a few things that don't make it, a, like, a million percent kid-friendly, you know, the, the poor hints and some of the stupid puzzles, but other than that, I think it's one of the best kids 
educational kids games ever. It does a good job of focusing on logic and it doesn't stray away and it doesn't take itself too seriously. It's great. It's perfect. It's one of the best educational games I've ever played. And when I give it, when I have children, I'm going to show them this game in particular. So there, mom. I proved that I was playing a game that wasn't a violent one. Are you happy? Wait a second. My mom doesn't live with me. So if that wasn't my mom, who was talking to me? It's me!